that's Azima, also known as Classical Bay. She is a viral violin sensation, but come on, huger than that. She's played with superstars such as Beyonce, Kendrick Lamar, and cello maestro Yo-Yo Ma, to name a few. And now she's using her talents to inspire New York City students and inspire them to love, to communicate, to enjoy, to succeed at classical music, just as she has. Last week, students at PS 133, the Fred R. Moore School in Harlem, were amazed by Azima's skills as uh, they had <laughs> instruments. They were standing ovation there. She is touring schools in Manhattan and the Bronx this spring to encourage students to apply to her program <laughs> called Strings by Heart. And Azima joins me now. Thank you so much for being here. What a thrill to be with those children. Oh, it was amazing. Did you see yourself in them? Oh, 100%. I, th I think it was a very much a full circle moment because mm -hmm. I started when I was around their age, and I know that I wouldn't be where I am today without the help of so many people who made my studies possible, my parents. Um, and I just think that it's all about access to opportunity. So it was really emotional to be there with those kids, oh. and it felt, I don't know, just I remember being in their shoes. So. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, were looking at uh, a photo of you as a little girl, and three years old, you picked it up, Violet? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Almost four. It's like a big okay. three. No, a three. <laughs> big difference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but combined with that, that your dad so much wanted you to go into medicine. I mean, this really, you know, growing up in Nebraska, uh, few, if any, people of color uh, playing string instruments, and you stuck with with your heart and what you wanted to do throughout the years. Yeah, I did, and I think um, it was largely because I just didn't fit in. I think mm. music in many ways was my best friend in a way, um, because I, I don't know, I think I just felt so alone in many, many ways. And then also being a person of color in the classical space, that sort of added on to a bunch of other factors I was dealing with growing up in Nebraska at that time. And you know, if you look at the stats on orchestras and the diversity, it's less than 4% of people in orchestras are black or brown. And I think that those numbers are low, not because of talent, it's just because of a lack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So anything that I can do to help sort of up that access, I wanna do. New school, uh, kind of everything really came together. You were double majoring, and then just the, the your interpretation, your love of hip hop, too, um, just fusing these two together, which speaks to an even greater audience. How did that? How did that happen? Well, you're right. I think the new school, and particularly New York, was so um, important in sort of giving me that idea to fuse these things together. I think what's amazing about New York is you have jazz, you have hip hop, you have mm -hmm. classical, everything is, it's really a melting pot. And especially as an artist. Um, so I had done science on my undergrad. I did um, biochemistry and math and violin. Oh my. And then when I graduated, I decided, I know, no sleep. I decided, <laughs> you know what? I really want to do violin. So I went to the new school and I also learned music production. Mm -hmm. And I think after graduating there with my master's, I really, sort of kind of had this idea to start taking classical pieces and reimagine them in a modern context. And that opened a lot of doors for me. And um, I think also just sort of gave me a fresh perspective as a violinist that not many people are accustomed to hearing. No, and even the titles of your work, uh, Vivaldi, <laughs> uh, what is it? Oh, shoot, I had it here. Vivaldi Springs, Springs Forth. Springs yeah. Forth, uh, Beethoven Pleads the Fifth. I mean, <laughs> er every bit of it, just so creative. And so inclusivity, diversity, this is, you know, again, part of your passion. Uh, tell us about your program and, and just how you're going to encourage, what can children and their families do? How do they apply? Right. So Strings by Heart is a nonprofit youth development music educational program based in New York City. And it is, the goal isn't to make musicians. Like, I don't really care if the kids become violinists. I hope they go on to do other things. But it's really about giving kids the chance to learn an instrument, violin or cello, at a really high level. So each child is given a free instrument. They're given free lessons. They get access to concerts throughout the city. Um, and then we're also doing monthly workshops for older kids, because for this uh, Strings by Heart educational program, we're wanting kids a little bit younger, so like first, mm. second grade. 
there. Mm -hmm. But then to also reach older kids, we're doing monthly workshops in things like music production so that the kids can also have, you know, the chance to participate. Yeah. And it's really just about teaching the art of learning. I think that's the most important thing about an instrument is you learn how to be disciplined and how to study. And, you know, the name strings by heart, everything's memorized because as musicians, we have to have things memorized a lot of the times. Um, also learning the art of working together as a team, playing an ensemble. Mm -hmm. There's so many sort of life and I think societal skills that are taught via music education. And unfortunately, when budgets get tight, the first thing to go is music education. So that's sort of why I decided to make a program that could really be of service to kids. And the website and how you speak, just even the way the font is, I think is just with such love. No, honestly, I was like, can, oh. I, can I sign up? Um, Maybe we can make room for you. <laughs> Well, okay, so I played the cello in the fourth and fifth grade. Okay, so cool. you know, you know what that's like, lugging home. And um, gosh, Zine, I'm embarrassed to say that I just, I wasn't that good, but I will say to you that during practicing and, you know, learning at school that it's, they speak, they're your voice. Is that, is that yeah. right? I mean, and I see that in your videos too, it's your voice. Yes, your body language and everything, but you're speaking to us. Yeah, and it's, sometimes I joke that I'm the most articulate on my instrument. It's my first language and English is my second. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really uh, such an amazing, I think, sort of outlet, I think, for people to have some way to just express themselves. You know, it's a bit of a lost discipline these days, so yeah. And you've offered just to play a little bit for us. What will you be playing? So this piece is called Fantasy Number no. 1 for Violin and Piano, and it's written by a composer named Florence Beatrice Price. She's a black woman, an American pianist who's a bit of a prodigy. Hmm. And I'm playing this just because I've recently discovered her music. I had no idea, I never was taught about her music. Um, and I think just, it's so fitting and aligned with the program and diversity. So I thought I would just highlight some of this for y'all. Thank you, go right ahead. Right. It's cool. So. It's it's emotional. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> right. it. I'm feeling yeah. it. I'm feeling it. Thank you so much, Azima. I, just thank, thank you, you for everything, and and we wish you all the luck in the world with whatever is ahead in your future. Um, I know your family is just so proud that you share this with them as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we uh, say to our viewers and families for more information and resources about Strings by Heart, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com.